Welcome back to the 411 on Wrestling Podcast. I'm your host, Blake Level, uh, back here on Monday, and I uh, hope everyone had a good weekend. And uh, there was a big news item that came out on Sunday night, uh, which is uh, certainly going to be the topic of discussion for today's episode. And that was Samoa Joe announcing that he was going to be relinquishing the NXT championship, of course. Joe made his uh, much-anticipated return to WWE not long ago, went the NXT route, um, set up a feud with Karrion Cross. Uh, we all know how that has sort of unfolded at this point. We've talked about that quite a bit uh, and became the NXT champion. And I think that it was going to bring about some obvious questions once all the details came out of the NXT revamp and, and all of that and all the changes that were going to be made. I think it was certainly understandable to sit there and think, okay, what does this mean? For Samoa Joe, even though not long ago he captured the championship, um, that was when we started to really understand that this NXT overhaul was going to be a thing, and perhaps the timing of it uh, was going to be uh, the real question as for how Samoa Joe is going to factor into the equation, uh, given you know all the reports about there would be stance and where perhaps they're headed with this with younger stars, um, and really trying to make this into something that perhaps is not the NXT of old, uh, trying to maybe go the route of uh, the old OVW. I know some people have made that parallel, perhaps, to what we could see uh, with this particular iteration of NXT. And that was always going to bring about uh, questions with Samoa Joe and what was going to be his role in this new era of NXT. Well, this is sort of the starting point for that, I think. Um, and let's just point this out, like the timing of it, you saw a lot of people on social media, um, even though the wording and all of that from Samoa Joe was talking about the injuries and WWE, uh, basically, you know, not giving him, uh, not clearing him to be able, uh, to, to perform due to certain injuries and that he has to step away, uh, for an indeterminate amount of time. And I think that was a very important part of this wasn't, hey, you know, I'll be back in a couple weeks. I'll be back next month. Um, and and he did say it was a brief uh, time, but an indeterminate amount of time. And um, I think that's, uh, you know, part of the wording that's going to bring about some questions with, is Samoa Joe going to be part of this new NXT at all? Um, and from an in-ring standpoint, I think when they brought him back, you know, there were a lot of expectations about him certainly serving in a trainer role which there's no doubt that he will likely continue to do that as long as he is a part of the company. Um, and, you know, I, I don't, I think it's a, it's an interesting slope here because you could understand if there is a situation where Samoa Joe, someone who has, you know, had injuries in the past and it's stuff that has kept him out of the ring for exp extended period of time, um, you could understand if that is that is the case here. And this is something where, you know, it is just a case of perhaps bad timing, and uh, there are reasons why he will not be able to perform here moving forward. You can understand if that is certainly the situation here. On the other hand, you can understand sort of the pessimism, I think, from certain fans surrounding whether the timing of this is a little too convenient with the NXT restart getting underway on Tuesday. Uh, with live shows, you know, starting this week. And this is where you're going to get the new presentation. You're going to get the new feel, the new look, everything that's going to come along with this new NXT. And all of a sudden, your champion vacates the title essentially 48 hours before you start this new this new overhaul. And so um, I think it's it's going to be interesting, you know, and, and, you know, Joe did add to this that he would be back shortly to recollect what is his, I think was the wording that he used. Um, so he he said it the right way, and it's Samoa Joe. You know he's going to be able to turn it into a promo of some sort. Um, but I think it will be interesting to see what comes out of this and whether or not, you know, ultimately we find out maybe this is just something that uh, was a, a call from the top where they would be just decided, hey, this is our new restart. We want to have a fresh champion. Um, we really want to treat this as though, you know, this is a completely new era. And if you're going to do that, you know, that perhaps starts with a, a new champion at the top. I'm not going to compare it to WCW back in the day when, you know, w WCW essentially had the restart and 
uh, you had Bischoff and Russo and, um, you know, you're, you're vacating all champions and, and all this other stuff. Um, I, I don't think that's the comparison you make, but I do, I get it. Like, I get it if you're WWE and you're wanting to go this route. Um, you know, if you're wanting to change everything, which we'll see if that's ultimately the case, you know, certainly there will be storylines that will continue to play off of where they were before. Of course, you've got the wedding coming up. Uh, with Dexter Loomis and Indy Hartwell. Um, and so you're going to have storylines that are going to continue from the previous iteration of the NXT, but it's clear that there's going to be a lot of changes. And this is, I think, the biggest one, because now the question becomes, what do you do in terms of uh, how do they how do they start this off now? I mean, the WWE that we know, I think it's very likely you'll see a tournament of some sort, perhaps. Um, maybe there's another different match type or maybe they just set up one big match where, you know, let's say you have four or six participants, something like that. Maybe that's the big match that you tease. Uh, maybe not this week, but in the coming weeks on a particular episode for the title, uh, that would probably earn a rating if you have a, a you know, a, an NXT championship match, or maybe you just wait and hold that off. But um, I, I think in all likelihood, you know, th this is something that you're going to, at least play out from a storyline standpoint, like they have a lot of ways they can go here. And I think this is going to be a big part of what we learn about this new NXT is who's going to be the person that holds this championship first, because that will speak volumes about maybe, you know, if you're whoever's in charge, which I think there's still a lot to be determined on that. Uh, I'm not sure we know exactly who is in charge still at this point. I think we'll have a pretty clear idea of that after Tuesday, uh, when, you know, inevitably reports will come out about who was producing the show and, and all this other stuff. But, um, you know, I think that's going to tell you a lot, whoever they decide to go with for this first NXT champion in this revamp, um, and what perhaps that could point you in the direction towards getting a better idea of where this brand's going to be three months from now, six months from now, and so on. Um, and really just the new, the new ideology, I think of, of what it's going to look like. And everyone can, can point to, you know, is this going to be Vince McMahon's situation where all of a sudden you've got a bunch of big, you know, jacked up guys running around and <laughs> it's going to be, uh, you know, sort of Vince McMahon's calling card in a sense. Uh, these are the guys that he's always sort of gravitated to and, and wanted to push his top stars. Um, do you have someone like that, that, that perhaps becomes that first champion, um, you know, and, and I think that's just, that's going to tell us everything is, you know, if Triple H, which right now we know Triple H is coming off of the uh, procedure, the, the heart procedure that he had, um, and there's no doubt that he's sidelined right now, and, and, you know, when he comes back, what's his, you know, fingerprint on all of this, because it is a new sort of era for NXT, and NXT has always been, you know, his baby, and um, even though it's it's overgoing a change unlike anything we've probably seen before when it comes to just the presentation and everything like that, um, how how similar are some of the things going to be that they do there? And that's why I think this Samoa Joe thing uh, really is, is, is significant because it is telling you that, look, I mean, Samoa Joe has to step away. Uh, if it is just the injury situation, you know, what would it have looked like? What were the plans? Um, with Samoa Joe as champion in this, you know, beginning uh, of, of this new era of NXT. My guess is, you know, if, if that was always going to be the case, if that was always a potential option, you know, you're probably going to find someone that you're sort of pegging as a next big top star type of person and put them in a position right away to elevate them to become NXT champion. And maybe that's still what they do. Maybe they still put someone in that situation. And if they go this route of doing the tournament uh, or whatever they do to crown a new champion, it's all going to be about elevating new stars. Like that's, it's something we've talked about with WWE, right? Like that's been the problem is if you look around and you try to compare how WWE has produced these huge stars over the years, um, the, the, the criticism has always been, well, they haven't done a good enough job consistently with that to where they have to bring back a lot of these legends to be able to boost ratings and viewership and all that, which we talked about on Friday's episode of the podcast um, with Dynamite and Raw and just the comparisons to where what are Raw's options to boosting his viewership? Well, you need more stars. Like, that's that's always going to give you a chance 
to boost your viewership. The more stars you can make, the more eyeballs you're going to have on your product. And if this is going to be the focus of the new NXT, which you would have to believe this is a big part of it. And, and we've heard, we've seen the reports, like everything that's come out about it, um, that seems to be the case, is they want to get back to not just, you know, finding a couple people here or there that are going to be able to come up to the main roster, be good talents. They want to find top stars. Like they want to be able to mold these top talents to where when they do come up to the main roster, they're in a position to where they can step in and be, you know, merch sellers. They can be main eventers. Like they can be people who can rise up the card very quickly into being, you know, perhaps the next Roman Reigns or the next whoever you want to look at in that scenario. And you can't blame them for that. I mean, that's that's a certainly a very, um, you know, it makes sense. Like if you're looking at it from a business standpoint, you need to create more stars. And and it should start, you know, with your, your developmental system. And I know we've had the discussion about whether NXT is a third brand or developmental and all this other stuff. I think right now the new iteration of it is going to probably make it pretty clear that it is going to be, you know, all about developing into these new stars. And that's going to be the, the big selling point, I think, for the new NXT. And so that's where, you know, the, the championship comes into play. And, and this is going to be a big opportunity now. Um, again, it, we go beyond the discussion of, is this an injury thing for Samoa Joe in reality? Or is it, you know, a WWE move to, to really move in a completely different direction? It, we have to go beyond that discussion now because, quite frankly, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it's, it is what it is now. Like, the championship has been vacated. Um, and there's clearly a direction they're going to go in with this, but it's how do they, how do they use this? And can they right away, like right off the bat, can they use this vacated championship to elevate someone outside of that realm of perhaps your current NXT stars? Do they all of a sudden bring in some of these new trainees and you have people who just are elevated very quickly to that top part of the card by perhaps crowning them as champion. Um, I think that's going to be very interesting uh, to see what direction they go in. So there's at least some intrigue with that uh, when it comes to figuring out how WWE is going to go about this. And I think that will add, you know, a few more eyeballs as well to the new revamp uh, debut on Tuesday. Uh, there are already going to be some intrigue with what people, what it's actually going to look like. But now that you have your top championship vacated, um, there's a little more interest, I think, in that. And uh, if you want some more interest uh, below the belt, you know where I'm headed with this. You've got to check out our friends at Manscaped because support 4411 on wrestling is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below the waist grooming, uh, precision engineer tools for your family jewels. Manscaped just launched uh, the Lawnmower 4.0. That's the fourth generation trimmer. And you heard that right, the 4.0. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, and you can use it with this exclusive offer just for you, 20% off and free shipping worldwide with the code 411wrestling at manscaped.com. Uh, again, I keep talking about it. One of the first people that gets a chance to try this new Lawnmower 4.0, and I've been using it now for a couple weeks, and let me just tell you, just completely blown away by the performance, the craftsmanship, and the details on this 4.0, it's next level, folks. And uh, it's got it's just the ultimate body trimmer. Uh, it gives you everything you could want. Um, it reduces the grooming accidents, which none of us want that, uh, thanks to its advanced skin-safe technology, where now you can feel confident shaving below the waist. It's got the multifunction on-off switch that can engage the travel lock. Great for people who like to travel. Uh, it's also got that 4000K LED spotlight. You can switch that on and off when needed for a more precise shave. Uh, the Lawnmower 4.0 even gives you uh, the customization options uh, where you can use the additional guard links with sizes 1 through 4. Uh, and by the way, I keep talking about it. This wireless charging, 4.0's wireless charging system uses uh, just a great technology to be able to help your battery length last longer on these things. You can take your time because Manscaped has got you covered. And if you're still shaving your face and body with the same trimmer, you're doing it all wrong. I keep saying it. So all you have to do, boost your confidence with this new body trimmer with Manscaped to make me time the best time. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code 411wrestling at manscaped.com. Use the best tools for the job and get 20% off and free shipping with the code 411wrestling at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the promo code 411wrestling. 
Unlock your confidence with the new Lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped. And so to continue our discussion, you know, with this whole NXT situation, which, by the way, we'll talk about on the podcast on Wednesday, uh, we'll have a review of kind of what we saw from Tuesday night's episode. And maybe that will give us, like I mentioned, a a pretty good idea of where things are going to head with NXT. Is it something that, you know, a lot of people look at positively? Will they look at it negatively? Um, you'll probably always have a little of both, but uh, we'll, we'll see what happens here. But I do think it's this is the, the big opportunity now for WWE. Uh, if they want to be able to perhaps build more goodwill with their fan base, because we, we've kept talking about it, that has been an issue, I think, recently with a lot of things they've decided to do. Uh, this being one of them, you know, there is a, a hardcore NXT audience that. The new logo in and of itself is going to turn some people off. They're going to believe that what they're going to be watching is not anything like they've known with NXT, just those three letters over the years. And so, you know, you only get, what is it the saying always is, you you only get one chance to make a first impression. And I think this show on Tuesday night is going to be huge because this is your chance if you're WWE and you really want to do this the right way, and you want to be able to keep some of that audience that you already had, and you want to be able to take, you know, the, I mean, really, in some instances, when you look at the numbers that SmackDown's doing, uh, we know Raw is still hovering around that 2 million range, a little below that. Uh, SmackDown's, you know, staying above that 2 million range. And if you want to take some of that audience and bring it, to NXT, which, as we've seen, has at times, I mean, there's even been a point recently where NXT dropped below 700,000 viewership viewers uh, overall. If you want to start bringing some of that audience to NXT, um, you know, you've got to be able to, to to really, I think, hit a hit a home run here on Tuesday night because there's no doubt, too, and we've seen it in recent weeks, for the, with WWE hyping up this new relaunch of NXT, they have put a lot more work into promoting NXT on their other brands, whereas before, it's almost just felt like NXT was a complete afterthought and this not even produced by the same company because they just never did a whole lot with it. And, and that's why I think we tied those parallels with how they bring up talent from NXT to where it just felt like you were bringing in talent from a completely different company and you weren't going to promote that company on your own brand, whether that's Raw, SmackDown, pay-per-views, whatever. It was just so rare to see that. But now we've seen, like, they've been promoting this all over the place. And I think it's, I mean, again, from a business standpoint, why wouldn't you do that? I don't know why you wouldn't do that before, uh, just because you have a larger audience on your other two weekly television shows. Why would you not be promoting, you know, NXT like crazy? I just don't, I never understood that and why they didn't do that in the first place. I'm sure there was some method to the madness, um, but I, I probably wouldn't have agreed with it in a certain sense because I just don't understand why you wouldn't want to promote um, a brand within your own company. Uh, but now, I mean, they've gone all in on this, and I think you know that's where the new logo, all this other stuff comes into play here, and um, they, they've really promoted it. So I think this number that they get on Tuesday night from a viewership standpoint, and, and most importantly, you know, right too, from the, the key demo. We, we talked about that on Friday with Raw and Dynamite. Um, what, is the, what is the key demographic going to look like, and how does that impact the business of WWE and NXT moving forward? Because we've always talked about with NXT, it's always skewed you know, to an older audience. Can they bring in some of those younger audience, which I think when you look at the logo, I have, again, little doubt that that was a big priority, was to make a logo that perhaps appealed to a younger audience. Now, with your actual programming and your actual presentation and storylines and all this other stuff, can you appeal to that younger audience? And that's where I think them moving towards perhaps pushing more young wrestlers, uh, putting them in more prime spots. And and like I said, I mean, there, there are going to be comparisons made depending on how they go about this. Does this become, you know, the situation like with OVW where you had some of those OVW rosters where, you know, you go back to the 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 golden group, I guess you could say, uh, you know, of Cena and Orton and Batista and those guys, um, you know, young guys who come in and they are taught the WWE way. And that was it. You know, they were off from there. Like you're off to the races after that. And can you do that same thing and be able to 
push push stars to that level that those guys got to. I mean, those are those are Hall of Fame talents, and I don't know that any of us are going to be looking on Tuesday night and looking around and saying, well, that person is a surefire Hall of Famer uh, without question. And I don't know that you could have said that about those guys in particular. I mean, I'm sure pretty early on we knew that those guys were were stars. I mean, you could just look at their look. You could see kind of how they were being molded and, and all the stuff coming out of that. Um, you know, of course, Brock was was part of that group as well. But I think that's th- there's a lot that has to play out here. I don't think we're going to immediately right away get a feel one way or the other of perhaps what the ultimate destination is going to be. Because I think, too, what's important to remember is who is going to be in charge of this? Like, who is going to be running this week to week? And I know there have been conflicting reports on who that's going to be. The expectation that Vince and, and perhaps Bruce Pritchard are going to be the ones that are going to see this on a uh, sort of a top level. They're going to maybe be the focus of a lot of the the top tier stuff, or maybe they're not at all. We don't know the answer to that just yet. I think we will know that pretty soon, um, again, based on probably some reports that will come out after Tuesday. But who is going to be in charge of this, and, and is it going to be a case where it's consistent enough to where you can build up these stars organically? If we do see a lot of young talent featured in some of these spots, do they just immediately overhaul how they want to do a lot of this stuff? Or, you know, is it a lot of sort of the same talent that's already there? And there's no, I mean, there's no question they're going to have to use some of the people that have already been there. And like, like we talked about earlier, I mean, they're, they are going to be able to continue some of these storylines that they've already built up. And, um, that, that, how quickly do a lot of, you know, how quick does a lot of that change? Uh, that's a, that's, I think, another important question. Um, how quickly do we see some of these characters go into different directions? That was also one of the reports that came out. I think Fightful Select had that last week on basically one of the statements, I think, from someone within WWE was that, you know, one of the sources mentioned that they wanted to perhaps move towards having more characters, which I don't think, to be honest, is a bad idea. I think that's always something, if you can find characters that connect with people, that also raises the opportunity to create more stars, but you have to do it, you know, the right way, and it can't just be, and I mean, that's what we're saying, right? Like, if you're wanting to create more characters, we've seen that with Karrion Cross. Like, I don't know that that's necessarily one that's gone over as well as uh, they perhaps would have perceived on paper, um, but I don't think it's a, the concept is not a bad concept at all. Um, you can have a lot of fun with that and you can draw a lot of interest. And that's like we said, if you are wanting to appeal to a younger audience, maybe that's one of the ways you go. Maybe, you know, build characters that people can identify with that perhaps aren't just labeled as good wrestlers. Um, there has to be another element to that. And I've always said that, you know, good wrestling is great, but for some people, you, you also want to have that character. You want to have a character driven story that you can get invested in. And um, if they go that route, awesome. Like, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, But as with everything, and as we've discussed this entire podcast, and you know, we've kind of been all over the place, but that's the reason is, I don't think we have any idea what to really expect on Tuesday night with this new NXT. And um, now when you add the vacated championship to the mix, um, and you just add in all the elements of not really knowing a whole lot. And it seems like, you know, Fightful Select also reported that talent still don't have a whole lot of good ideas as to what this is going to look like. Um, there's just a lot of unknowns. And I think that that raises interest, which I think is a good thing. Um, there's suspense. I'm, I'm all for a good suspense thriller. Uh, maybe that's what we get on Tuesday night. Uh, there's some people that are optimistic, some people who are pessimistic. Uh, it's WWE, and I can understand both sides based on uh, their track record and those types of things. But uh, at least, I guess, in this sense, uh, there there is a lot to to be able to to look at here, and uh, I think we'll we'll know a lot more on Tuesday night with the uh, the first edition of the new NXT, and uh, perhaps what we will be looking at with this brand uh, moving forward. There will be a lot, I think, jam packed into this two hour show, and. Uh, it is, I think I, I'm going to be on the optimistic side. Like I am, I am more curious, I think than anything that maybe we'll see them put some of these talents in the best spot to elevate them, uh, and give them a, a really good opportunity to succeed on the main roster. Because I don't think for the most part, they've always been able to do that very well when it comes to NXT talent going to the main roster. They they need to get better at that when it comes to that transition process. And if this is something that's going to do that, 
great. I think it'll work out for all parties involved. Uh, but if it's not, and there continues to be that disconnect, um, and just continues to be, you know, just a, a completely different, you know, world basically from NXT to Raw or SmackDown, which I don't think it's going to be the case. I think this is going to change that a little bit. And maybe I'm wrong, and that's why we have this audio, right? We can all go back and have a good laugh with this. But um, I think it's th- there's a lot th- there's a lot to figure out with NXT, and and I hopefully we get a good idea of what that's going to be uh, on Tuesday night. So uh, there's some quick thoughts on uh, the Samoa Joe situation. Uh, what's next for NXT? And uh, again, be sure to check out everything we got going on before one mania.com. We'll have live coverage of NXT uh, on the site on Tuesday nights. You can check that out. Of course, we have live coverage of, of all the big shows each week. You can check out uh, everything we got going on, Raw, SmackDown, Dynamite, Rampage, Impact. Uh, you can check it all out over the site, 41mania.com, and uh, be sure to subscribe to the podcast. Any podcast app you use, search for 41 on Wrestling and continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel. A lot of great stuff uh, over there and a lot more on the way uh, here moving forward. And as always, uh, we will have the link to the GoFundMe for Larry Zonka's family in the show notes. Be sure to continue to share and contribute to that if you can uh, and everything else for onemania.com. But uh, thanks as always for listening to the podcast and uh, we'll talk to you next time here on the 411 on Wrestling Podcast.